Hi there, I'm Mike, and what I have for you today is Bandai Tamashi Nation's movie realization series, Ronin Django Fett. If you're like me, you've seen these figures online and at your local comic shop, or even at your local Barnes and Noble. And you pick it up thinking, oh, cool. And then you look at the price tag and you put it right back down. At least I did. But I got a $50 gift card from Amazon and Amazon had this guy on sale for $70 instead of his normal $90. So I figured, hey, for the price of a normal Black Series figure, I can give this a shot. Couldn't be that bad, right? I mean, it's not. I didn't think about the worst problem where it's so good, I wanna buy more. Starting off with my normal review process, let's take a look at how this guy looks. Now, this line, the movie realization line, takes beloved Star Wars and Marvel characters and gives them sort of a feudal Japan kind of flair. Now, I've made it no secret that I grew up in the my teens and early 20s loving anime. Other than giant mech anime, my other love was the feudal Japan Moroni Kenshin type anime. So they took this and mixed it with another love flawlessly and they gave it to me in my preferred delivery method. Hard plastic. So this right here is Django Fett. Now he is just a retool and repaint of their previously released Boba Fett. He does have a different belt for the pouches that Django Fett had over Boba Fett. He also has the holsters that Django Fett has over Boba Fett for his twin pistols instead of long blaster rifle. Other than that, He's silver and blue, whereas Boba Fett was gray and I don't know, whatever color Boba Fett's armor is. I'm colorblind, guys. You should know that by now. I'm not good at colors. His colors are different, but helmet-wise, armor-wise, he definitely looks like Jango Fett. But if Jango Fett existed in like the 16 or 1700s in Japan, maybe 1800s with the steampunk vibe they got going on. Moving right along to his accessories, boy howdy does he come with a lot, but he should. He's a $90 figure. He better. His backpack is removable. It has a lot of great paint apps in, and molded details in it by itself. The rocket is also supposedly removable from the instructions that I saw, but I am terrified of taking this apart. Every time I try to take it off, just for funsies, I chicken out within a couple of seconds. I don't want to break this. The rocket pack does just kind of clip right into the hole on the back. Now, I do find that it's sort of loose and falls out a little bit, but it's not a big deal. On top of the backpack, it does come with these little flint lock type guns to go with this steampunk aesthetic. It does have some moving components. The hammer does move up. It's articulated, which gives it sort of a fun little play feature, but I wouldn't really mess with it. It can fall out. If it does, you can put it right back in, but it's small, so I'd be careful with it. It does fit easily into his holsters, which is nice, although I wouldn't do it too much because I would be afraid of paint wear. He comes with this little sheath that is removable as well as a little tanto or wakizashi or some kind of smaller katana sword that fits right into it. The sword itself has a lot of great detailing, especially on the hilt, as well as a great paint wash. I really admire the detail that it has just in the sword alone. On top of that, it comes with this tiny little kunai or a little throwing knife that you can put in his gauntlet here. And that's to simulate the dart that he used to kill the bounty hunter Zam Wessel, who he hired to try to kill Padme because he outsources all of his jobs. And that's just another fun little detail. I will say though that mine tends to fall out of the gauntlet quite often, so just be careful of that. It's not annoying enough to really dock at anything, it's just something to be aware of. On top of all of those accessories, he does come with five pairs of hands. Well, he comes with hands that he would come with because he has hands. And then he comes with four extra pairs of hands which is great. The hands that come on the figure are in fists for the rough and tumble boxing. He comes with slightly more open hands. He comes with even more open hands. And then he comes with even, even more open hands for holding various items or standing naturally with his hands by his side or I don't know, there's just a lot of different variations of how far his hands open that you can easily take off and put on his uh, ball joint on his wrist. He also comes with two hands that hold his guns very well with the fingers right in the triggers. And that's just a fun little touch. There's so many options on different kinds of hands. It's tough to choose. Bandit didn't have to put this level of work into the figure, but at the same time, I guess the kind of did. Next is articulation. Let's go ahead and take a look at his articulation real quick like. Django's head moves side to side very freely. Forward that much. Back that much. He has like a million joints underneath here that give him a lot of movement around. His armor is hinged. His shoulders move back and forth like this. His arm moves up this far. There's a double jointed elbow and each of these 
has a swivel on both sides. The wrist has a swivel as well as a hinge that can move this way or if you turn the wrist, it can move this way. There's a diaphragm joint that can move around, forward this far, back that far. His leg is hindered by the armor up here, but not as much as you think it would be. It goes forward that far, back that far. He has a double jointed knee. The upper thigh can twist as well as this lower leg can twist. And the ankle has rotation, a tilt. It's pretty much that crazy hinge joint that the wrist has. With this being Django's widest stance with both his feet flat on the ground. Django has joints on swivels on joints. In the traditional Bandai Tamashi Nation's figure arts style, he just has articulation out the butt. Shoulders move back and forward, up and down, double jointed everything. And what's cool about this is they've hidden a lot of the joints under all of the detail, but they're still there. So you can still get a lot of great articulation. In some cases, the armor even has its own articulation with his little viewfinder and the shoulder joints. Honestly, it's incredible. Next, we'll take a look at the detail and sculpt of this figure. It is top notch. As I said earlier, it's essentially just a repaint of their Boba Fett figure, but I never got that and he's super expensive now. So this is new to me and that's great. I'm glad that I have an option of getting an affordable version of this mold. The sculpt is full of tiny details like rivets in the armor that hold it together, sculpted and painted leather to make it look worn but real, which is super nice. He even has sandals on his feet instead of boots, but he still has molded toe darts, which is just a fun little piece of trivia that he had those. My only real complaint with the figure is his armor under his neck and around his shoulders. It came warped in the package, probably from heat and shipping, but no matter what, it always just kind of sticks up in an unsightly way. You can see under the armor or it kind of gets caught on the neck. It's just, it's not good. I'm sure a little heat or water or something can fix it right up and it's super easy, but it shouldn't and I shouldn't have to. It should just be okay. And it's kind of funny how a nitpick like that can be exponentially exacerbated by how expensive the figure is. $20 figure, I'd let something like that slide, not a big deal. $90 figure, much bigger deal. I've always been interested in this line. The only thing that ever really stopped me from getting into it was the price. One of these figures is typically about four and a half figures worth of Black Series figures. Or if two of them, I could buy a whole case of figures and still have a little left over. I don't really know why I chose Django in the first place. Maybe it was because he was on sale. I did have my eye on a couple other ones. Actually, it was pretty much because he was on sale, and I like Django as a character. Even though the prequels were pretty maligned as a series, Django was a pretty cool character from it, and I've always loved the Mandalorian style. And they took that Mandalorian style and mixed it with the Japanese aesthetic. It's just a recipe for awesome. It wasn't really ever a matter of if I'd buy one, but when and which one. The execution of this is okay. He's generally available from most of your favorite online retailers. He's also typically available from your local comic shop and like I said earlier, Barnes and Noble. So they're not hard to find. The only thing that really should be turning you away from buying this, if you're a Star Wars fan, is that price. But if you have the means to buy it, I highly recommend it. My only problem right now is which figure's next? Darth Vader? Darth Maul? Maybe one of the Stormtroopers. Maybe that one with the drum. It's just kind of weird and neat. I've dipped my toe into the feudal Japan world that Bandai has created. And I like it. Please send help. So that's my review of Bandai Tamashi Nation's movie realization series, Ronin Django Fett. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. Do you own it? Do you own any from this line? Is this something that you collect? Is it something that you're staying away from for a price? I like to read those things, so just let me know. Is there another one that you recommend me buy? There's a bunch of other ones in the line. There's even Marvel figures. Let me know which one I should buy next or what you think I should buy next and whether or not I should review it. I'm guessing if you're telling me to buy one, you want me to review it, but that's just me. There's a bunch of great ways you can help support me and my channel down in the downstairs area under, you know, the description. You can take a look at that if you want to. Go ahead and like, share, subscribe, do all that normal stuff that normal YouTubers say to do. And I'll see you later. Bye.